Hi everybody, welcome to today's LinkedIn Live where I'm joined um, with Peter Turner who is the CEO and founder of Connection CFO who are a strategic advisory supporting ambitious growth-based businesses um, from seed to scale up all the way to growth and sale. Um, welcome Peter. We're right. going to have a, a quick 15-minute Q&A surrounding the future of, finance, of the finance function and why fractional CFOs play such a pivotal role within the business. So, um, yeah, I think we'll kick off, Peter. Um, so I think we'll start off with a little bit about who you are and um, you are the founder of Connection CFO. And if you can give us a little bit about who you are and a little bit about who Connection CFO are. Okay, thanks, Pamela. Um, so, Peter Turner, um, before I tell you a little bit about Connection CFO, I'm going to give you a little bit of, about my background. Uh, I'm a qualified accountant. Uh, I've been a CFO a number of times. Over the last 15 years, I've probably interviewed in excess of 3,000 plus businesses. And I've placed a CFO into probably 700 plus uh, clients uh, in, in that period as well. I also started my first tech venture in 2015, which was sold in 2021. And I started another tech venture at the beginning of uh, 2023. So I understand it from both the, the founders' side, the entrepreneurs and the CEOs perspective, and I also understand stand it from the um, other CFOs perspective as well. And, and what I, you know, I'm really passionate about ma matching top class CFOs with highly ambitious growth based businesses and, and seeing the outcomes that the, the two can can achieve. Um, and that's hence the reason for starting up Connection CFO. And we're, so we're essentially replacing top class CFOs into highly ambitious growth based businesses, whether on a fractional part time uh, project uh, basis or, or intro basis. Amazing. The perfect yeah. combination. Um, mm. Cool. OK, um, so I think one of the things that comes to mind for me is um, what is the difference between these different types of CEOs? So operational CFOs growth focused and venture focused CFOs because I think we just assume their CFO is a CFO but obviously you you're here to tell us different of course <laughs> thanks um, <laughs> it's, it's interesting that uh, a number of, uh, a lot of people would say to be especially CFOs technically we're all the same it just comes down to personality but you know <laughs> I don't think they could be further from the truth really there is such a variance um, and Ultimately, what makes the big difference is those that uh, CFOs that understand the commercial requirements of a business rather than the operational requirements. Um, so if you look at the commercial piece, I think there's five key pillars. It's about understanding the market, you know, the TAMs, the SAMs, understanding the product, you know, product lifestyle, product innovation, understanding uh, sales or routes to market for, for businesses, and, and then understanding, you know, what are the executives that we need within this business to, to scale to achieve the outcomes that as founders we're looking for and then finally what systems do we need in place and and the really strong cfos understand those five key pillars really well and how we can map that in, in into a business model but just in terms of the difference i'm, I'm going to start with a venture at the top with a venture focus here cfos these are people who are predominantly worked inside pe backed businesses um they've put you know just one or two they've done four or five or six different roles They've probably been involved in, uh, in PE bank businesses for 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, and the reason why I like working with these types of people is because you know, they're, they're very much outcomes driven. Most of the time, they're brought into these roles to achieve certain outcomes. It's, it's predominantly transactional. It could be, for example, to do a, a 50 million pound plus uh, exit or, or a 20 million pound debt raise, some type of, type of large. A re a reorganization or, or an acquisition and so their roles tend to be quite project orientated they can be from six months to, to 18 months okay. but what i really like about it is they've got extremely strong commercial skills and they understand pressure they understand yeah. the pressure of working inside a pe-backed environment and being able yeah. to bring those down to say uh say smaller uh high scale entities is just phenomenal um so i, I really because they already understand what it's going to look like and feel like and act like when you're working inside those feedback they understand how to present to boards present to uh, investors they understand um you know strong business models um and they understand how to make that executive team work and improve the data etc the growth focused cfos again they're really strong around those five key pillars they predominantly work inside businesses that are scaling organically eg 20 percent per annum growth 
or have been invested in by high net worth or VC uh, enterprises. Uh, they tend to be more long term, e.g. one, two, three, four, five years, they might stay inside those clients. Um, and, and typically those businesses are probably between one to 15 to 20 million turnover. But again, very focused in around the, the five key pillars of, of the, the commercial space and, and how you add that into, into a business model. The key thing I guess you're looking for is that I've had that experience around raising funds or doing an acquisition or taking a business overseas. The operational CFOs tend to be more focused around the numbers, uh, good at board presentations, they will understand certain parts of the commercial commercial model, but they probably haven't had a lot of experience breaking down into all the little micro parts of the commercial model. Um, so, for example, you could get a, a um, divisional CFO of Apple, for example, and they've never done a fundraise, never done a uh, never done a, an exit, probably haven't yeah. done any acquisition because they have teams, but the but the name behind them is really strong. So, um, uh, so. They be on the next one, but they, you know, they don't have that capability that the growth CFO does, or, or especially the venture CFO. Okay, amazing. I've learned something very new today. Thanks for that, Peter. And um, so, when we speak about fractional CFOs, um, sort of, what do they bring to a business, and is there any um, risk involved? I think the importance is. You have to define it by the the outcomes that you, as a business owner you're looking to achieve um and and then mapping the the value that a cfo can give to those outcomes so not everything's about doing a transaction e.g a fundraise or or um an m a activity or moving your business overseas but it could be about we want to achieve 20 percent organic growth over the next three years we want to improve our ebitda um so, and the people who have had experience, whether they're venture or growth-based CFOs, have had experience doing that. They can bring that to a to a, a business at a much faster pace, at a much lower cost base, because they're only working easy a day a week inside a client. And also, they're not getting caught up in the day-to-day -day weeds of the business, which potentially slows them down. And then, and that stops them essentially looking at the the macro pieces around that around that those five key pillars. Um, so I think the value of the, of the fractional CFO is to bring in the skills and expertise at speed, and which enables you to scale at a, at a faster rate. Um, there's definitely a risk inside the um, uh, fractional CFO market. And the biggest risk I see is that everybody assumes that a CFO is the same, that can sit, deliver the same skill sets just because they've got the title. Um, I often say to people who ask me about risk is, I see a lot of, a lot of entities who promote their financial control to the CFO or promote the financial FD to the CFO role, yet they've never done a fundraise, they've never done an exit, haven't been involved in detailed tax planning or investor relations. And really, if they're going to do that, they should be looking to maybe get a fractional person to come on board and do some mentoring. But okay. if, if, you, if you're highly ambitious and you're growth orientated, you really should be looking for minimum growth, to, uh, growth CFO, if not a venture-based CFO, to come and join, join your portfolio. Whether you use us or use an independent, really, yeah. you should be doing a lot of a uh, lot of uh, background checks into somebody if they say well i've done five exits you know get them to go through those five exits or yeah. done three get them to go through those fundraisers and if they haven't then and you want to do a fundraiser it's probably best that you just don't engage with those those types of people okay thank you um so how do you connection cfo differ from other fractional fds and cfos for me, we, we break it down into what we call the, the, C, the CPO. It's uh, fairly simplistic, and that's all about quality of clients that we want to work with, where we genuinely feel we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Quality of people who we generally know that they are they're very good, they've got the experience, we've background checked it, uh, and then the quality of the outcomes that both, that both the client is looking to achieve and the quality of the outcomes that the, the team feel that they can provide into that into that client. So for example, it could be a client that's saying we want to improve our EBITDA so it's, so it's better than 10% per annum. And this, this a CFO can say, well, I might be able to improve it to 12%. Or you're looking for an exit value of 20 million uh, and the, the CFO might be able to get you to 25 or 26 or 27 million. Or you want to hit revenues, you want to grow from 5 million this year to 20 million in two years time. Now maybe how can we get you from 5 million to 30 million in two years time? So I think it, so we, that's how we differ very much focus on the outcomes that both parties are looking to, the client's looking to achieve and how the CFO can add value to that and maybe even increase those outcome values. Okay, 
fabulous, perfect marriage as such. Um, what does, um, so let's talk a bit about the finance function. What does the future of the finance function look like to you? And, and there's so much around AI these days. Sort of how does that play a part in that? In your well, I think there's um, AI and finance is two elements. There's automation. So uh, a certain uh, number of the finance functions are going to be automated. I mean, that's happening today. Um, there's a number of applications out there that help you automate, automate certain tasks. Um, I think even, I think potentially the operational CFO's role c could become redundant at some point, whether that's three years, five years, seven years, eight years, but we don't know, but it yeah. potentially could become redundant at some point. But the, the real strength I think of, of AI is uh, the analysis. So the, I, there's automation and there's analysis. And I think AI will widen the data points that a CFO has to be able to analyze a, the performance of a business compared to itself, compared to its market, compared to its competitors here and overseas. Um, and what, for example, what competitors are doing in the in North America. Um, and as a result of being able to do have those wider data points, a CFO is going to be able to make probably stronger recommendations to a board or to the executive team about whether we, we keep maintaining this product life cycle that we're on or whether we should, based on what com the competition is doing in America, maybe we should be moving into those particular product product opportunities. And AI is, not, not, AI is going to be able to tell you all the summary of those product opportunities going forward. And also be able to tell you what the pricing structures are like, what the cost structures are like, maybe what the investment analysis needs to be and then as a CFO, I'm going to be able to bring that into our current business model and make recommendations to the board about whether we should be following those particular product trends in America or following product trends somewhere else, um, whether that's increasing or declining. So it's going to give us far more wider data points that we will need to analyze and bring into our business model. And that's going to happen at speed, um, not just, you know, it's going to happen at a lot more speed. So it means that the CFO is going to have to be a lot more receptive to those commercial, uh, the commercial elements within a business. And yeah. We're probably gonna have to widen the skill sets in terms of our knowledge sets around, around the business and around markets, around products, around rest of market, around people, around systems. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so I think that kind of wraps up our, our little fireside chat. I think, um, thank you, Peter. It's been really great to chat to you and I've certainly learned a lot myself. And um, thank you for joining everyone. You can find um, Peter's, um, uh, all of Peter's uh, details on our LinkedIn. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Pamela, thank you very much. Thanks, Peter. Take care. Okay. Bye.